Hello, and welcome to this presentation on Jenkins X, Service Applications and Continuous Integration and Delivery. Let's get started. So we know that these days everyone is a, works for a software company. Hello and welcome to this presentation on Jenkins X, serverless applications and serverless CI and CD. Now, hopefully a lot of you will have read the amazing Accelerate book. It's full of uh, amazing and useful information on how we can all become high-performing teams. Increasingly, most of us work for companies that increasingly are defined as software businesses now. So it's really important for all of us to become high-performing teams so we can deliver business value to our customers quickly. Uh, we can do work in small increments and get those increments in front of customers as quickly as possible to help us get feedback and verify that we're doing the right stuff. Now, one of the most empowering things about this book is any team can become a high-performing team. It's really about what practices you do uh, as you build software, so working in small increments and so on and so forth. So the whole raft of different things in the book, uh, not everything in the book can be automated through software, particularly things about leadership and management and so forth. But there's a whole raft of recommendations in the book that are fairly easy to automate through software tools. So things like uh, version control, uh, version all of your artifacts, automate your deployment process, use trunk-based development rather than long-term feature branches, implement continuous integration, implement continuous delivery, use a loosely coupled architecture. Lots of the things in the book with Jenkins X, we try to automate those through software to make it easy for teams to basically do the right thing and go faster. So how does Jenkins X help you go faster? Well, basically it helps you automate your CI and CD. So rather than focus, you focusing on things like infrastructure, cloud, containers, Kubernetes, Helm, figuring out how to do CI CD, figuring out how to tag Git or do releases, rather than all of that kind of stuff, you can just focus on building your application and let Jenkins X automate the CI and CD using best practices of, of CI and CD. Uh, one of the features Jenkins X does is whenever you merge to one of your master branches, uh, a new release is created, it versions, generates new artifacts and images of your code. Um, those are immutable and then usable in any cluster and environment ever. Uh, then it promotes those new versions through all of your environments via GitOps. When you're proposing a code change through your team, uh, and you create a pull request on the Git repository, Jenkins X will automate all of your CI tests to verify your code compiles and, and builds and all the test paths and so forth. It also creates something called a preview environment that basically creates a dynamic environment for your code change for the pull request. It then builds and deploys the code in that preview environment. So your team can get fast feedback on that new feature. For example, if someone in your team changes the CSS and HTML layout of your website, you might want to actually look at what it looks like with one click of your browser to see what the code looks like before you agree to merge it, rather than just looking at like the Git div. So preview environments really help you get feedback from your team and again, go faster. So that's how Jenkins X helps you go faster. And let's talk a little bit about serverless. So the CI and CD pipelines in Jenkins X can be completely serverless, as in there is no need to run a Jenkins server forever. Instead, Jenkins X pipelines let you define your pipelines in YAML. We can automate them all as well, so you don't even need to do that step. Then rather than running a Jenkins server all the time, we literally just spin up a pod or container in Kubernetes for the duration of your pipeline. Then we tear it down again afterwards. So in other words, you only pay for the compute of your actual builds. When you're not building anything, there's no need to run any uh, complex large infrastructure. Jenkins X pipelines are based on an open source project called Tecton that came out of Google and has recently moved to the CD Foundation and has got contributors for many companies such as CloudBees and Red Hat and IBM and all kinds of other people. So it's really cool technology. It's building the next generation cloud native pipeline engine, which is all completely automated for you in Jenkins X, which is great. So that's serverless CI and CD and I'll show you a demo in a few moments. What about building serverless applications yourself? So there's another open source project called Knative, which lets you build applications and take functions, turn them into containers, and then expose those containers uh, over HTTP endpoints 
and then it automatically scales those containers up and down based on load. So it's rather like if you ever used like Amazon Lambda or Google Cloud Functions or Azure Functions. It's like the typical functions of service experience. The difference is Knative can run on any Kubernetes cluster anywhere, whether it's on-premise, in the hybrid cloud, private cloud, public cloud. So Knative is essentially like a standard way of uh, configuring your application so it will run literally anywhere. Um, Google just announced Google Cloud Run and Google Cloud Run takes containers and Knative metadata and runs it on either Google's cloud and functions as a service infrastructure or inside GKE. So with applications built with Knative, we can literally run them anywhere. There is no lock-in. It's completely vendor neutral and we get elastically scaled web applications and functions as a service, which is really cool. So to help people develop Knative and serverless applications in Jenkins X, we've basically baked Knative into Jenkins X. So if you choose to use Jenkins X and Knative together, all of the build packs and the pipelines and everything in Jenkins X just work and everything just becomes serverless. So I'll show you an example very shortly. Uh, firstly, I need to I've not enabled Knative yet, so I'm going to type JX create add-on glue. And this is going to install um, an open source library called Glue, which um, embeds Knative Serve. It's a small uh, microservice that performs the service mesh kind of load balancey stuff for uh, Knative Serve. So it's basically a package of the Glue uh, service mesh plus Knative Serve, uh, which is really simple and easy to install. Um, so we'll type this install in, give it a couple of moments, and hopefully it should all be installed fairly quickly. So there we go, it's, it's all installed. Um, and if I show you what's happened, uh, if I do kubectl get namespace, we'll see we've got two new namespaces. One's called glue system and one's called knative serve. If I do kubectl get pod in the glue system, we'll see glue has installed these four pods. And then if I do kubectl get pods in the uh, knative serving namespace, we'll see uh, knative servers install these four pods. So we have these uh, eight little um, controllers that are running. They're all fairly small, little Go applications. It's spun up pretty quickly. But now that means we now have, uh, we've installed the knative serve system using Glue, and we're all ready to go building knative applications in this Kubernetes cluster. So now we've installed Knative. Uh, let's create a new quick start using Knative to show you how to build serverless applications. So to create a new quick start, I'm going to do J is create quick start. There we go. Um, and it's going to use my Git. My, I'll use my personal Git provider, and this is the organization that's going to store the Git repository in, and I'll go for my personal account on GitHub. Now we'll think of a cool, funky name for my project, and I'll call it uh, Elastic Awesome, there we go. So um, we're creating a brand new Git repository called Elastic Awesome. Um, I'll do, uh, uh, let's do a node application. So do a node.js application. Would I like to initialize Git? Yes, that commit message looks good. So we've created a brand new node application on my file system. We've initialized Git. It's now running the build pack. It's now pushed it into GitHub. And we've now set up the CI and CD pipeline for this node application. So that was pretty quick, right? We typed one command. We've got a brand new microservice using, in this case, Node. Uh, we've set up the serverless pipelines with Jenkins X and Tekton using uh, automating our CI and CD. Um, and if we look in this Git repository, uh, there it is, this Git repository. This is the source code for our application. It's a really, really complicated uh, Node.js application, as I'm sure you can see. Um, and we've defaulted in the build pack. So we've created the Jenkins X YAML which literally just says which build pack to use. We can use this YAML file to add any pre or post uh, steps and override things in the build pack if we wish. And uh, we've also added a Docker image, a Docker file, which, sorry, a Docker file, which defines how to package this application up as a Docker image. So we've taken the uh, project, we've run the pipeline. <coughs> oh, excuse me. We've run the pipeline. And if I run this command, we'll see the pipeline has triggered um, and because we've pushed to the master uh, branch, it's triggered a brand new release. So uh, the Jenkins X pipeline has created a Tekton uh, pipeline pod. That pod is chugging away and it's uh, tagging Git. 
it's pushed the tag to Git. It's now uh, building all the source code. Um, it's going to create a Docker image and tag the Docker image with the new version number. It's going to generate a Helm chart for this version number, push that into the Helm chart repository. The Docker image is going to be pushed, in this case, to GCR because we're using Google Container Registry. Um, if you use Amazon, it uses ACR. If you use, uh, if you use Amazon, it uses ECR. If you use Azure, it uses ACR. So we're using the container registry. Um, well, the build's chugging, I'll just show you what's happening under the covers. If I click the release tab, we'll see it's created a release. It's not quite generated the change log yet. That should happen any second now. Uh, oh, it should have done the change log if I hit reload. There we go, there's the change log. So it's tagged Git with 001, it's created the change log. It's pushed the Docker image to GCR. So we've got a 001 version of my Docker image. It's got the Helm chart with all the YAML inside. Now it's promoting this new version. And if I click on this URL, this is the pull request that it's generated to promote this new version into the staging environment. So if I click on this URL, we'll see this is a pull request that's generated automatically. So this is basically how GitOps works. We're using a Git repository, you'll see, for the staging environment. So staging has, is an environment and has a Git repository. Production has a Git repository. To promote an application into staging, we generally we automate the generation of a code change, a pull request on that Git repository. So if I look at the diff, this is the actual code change that's being proposed, which basically says add a new application dependency of this Helm chart with this version. So because we've never run this application before, it's changing three lines of code. Once we've merged this, the next pull request would just change one line of code to change one version. Right? Uh, so we generate the pull request. Um, now this pull request is being verified by the CI and CD pipeline on the pull request. So in a few moments, the pipeline is going to run and verify that it can see this Docker image. The Helm chart looks OK and everything's kind of passed. All of our governance checks are valid and so forth. We are allowed to deploy this image. So the tests are, are going to run. It's gone green. Uh, the tests have passed. It's now automatically merged because our governance rule said we could merge this automatically uh, if it went green. So the pull request is now merged. Awesome. So now the promotion build on the master pipeline of this uh, Git repository is going to trigger. And in a few, months, few moments time, we'll have our application running in the staging environment. So in one command, we create a brand new quick start. We create all of the source code for our application. It then automatically set up the CI and the CD for our application. It checked all of that into Git and set up all the web hooks on our Git repository. So it's going to trigger our Jenkins X pipelines using Tekton in a serverless fashion whenever we merge to master or whenever we create a new pull request. Okay, So it's really, really simple. We create a new quick start with one command and everything just kind of works. So we can see our application is now running in the staging environment, which is great. So let's click on that URL and we'll try out the application. Hooray, isn't that awesome? So we have a Hello World, Hello Node application that's actually running in our staging application. And if I look at the pods that are running uh, in the staging namespace, we'll see uh, kubectl, oh, sorry, get pod, I can't type. QCTL get pod in the surgeon, we'll see we're running one pod, which has got two containers, um, and one pod is running. So uh, KServe has decided that one pod is enough um, to surface the load of this infrequent request. Now I'm going to leave that running for a while, and uh, we'll see that in a, in a minute or so, it, it's good, Knative will automatically scale down this, uh, this pod because if I don't then invoke this endpoint anymore, KSA will automatically scale down this endpoint. So I'm going to speed up the video in a second and we'll see uh, Knative automatically scale down this pod. And then once everything's not running, I'll trigger it again and I'll show you it scale back up again automatically. Okay, we're back. We've left uh, KSA running for a little while uh, and you can see it's terminated all the pods. You can see we have no pods anymore. Okay, so we were running some pods, we had a little bit of activity, then everything's gone really quiet for about 10 minutes, and so it's scaled back, uh, 
initially to zero ready pods, but kept the pod around. Then after kind of 10, 12 minutes, it's got rid of the pod completely because we weren't using the pod at all. So now I've got no pods at all in, in the staging repository, which is cool. We've scaled down to zero automatically and K-Server's K done all of that for us. If I then go to this web application and let me resize this window a bit so it's a bit easy to watch. I'll close those tabs. Uh, if I then click reload, you'll see in the background KServe uh, spin back up a pod to service this request. I'm going to hit reload now, click, and we'll see KServe spin up a brand new pod, create a pod, it'll be running fairly soon, and then it'll service the request. So we've then, it's done. So we've gone from completely cold where there wasn't a pod running at all, there was literally nothing at all running, KServe's automatically spun up a container and service request dynamically. So we've scaled back completely to zero and then scaled back up again on demand all through KServe. So there we go, we've installed KServe and use, use, we've installed Knative uh, and used Knative to auto scale our application really simply. Now the demo you've just seen has all been around doing a git commit um, and merging to master to trigger a release. But what do you do if you're a developer and you want to uh, iteratively work on some code before you're ready to commit the code? So I want to show you something in Jenkins X called a dev pod. Now, one of the big motivations behind dev pods is, um, you've maybe heard this phrase before, it works on my machine, right? Uh, throughout the history of IT, we've all had lots of different computers with lots of different software installed on them all. Uh, some people have a Windows machine, some have a Mac, some have a Linux box. So we've had this plethora of different computers with different software, different tools, different stacks, different operating systems and network and storage. And what we really want to do is we all want to deliver business value quickly. So we kind of want to always be running on the most production-like environment we could possibly have all the time. We don't really want to be writing software and then running it on a Windows machine and testing it on Windows and then deploying on production on a Linux machine inside Kubernetes. So the idea behind DevPod is to try and encourage developers to always be in a production-like environment all the time, right? If you can make everything uh, look and feel like it's on your laptop, but actually really be in the cloud in a container in Kubernetes, we get a win-win scenario. Developers don't waste their time finding bugs on a completely different operating system and platform than production. And we get to use the cloud well uh, and reuse the same production-like platform. Plus, it's pretty common at a lot of companies, you know, developer laptops can sometimes be a little on the small size. So let's use the cloud well to help developers go faster and let's encourage developers to always be using that production-like environment. So let me show you how to create a dev pod. Um, so we're going to do JX create dev pod, and then we hit return. And then that's going to go off and create a new dev pod, um, and boom, it's done it. So now this might look like my terminal is now uh, running on my laptop, but now this current terminal has changed from running on my laptop to running in a dev pod in my Kubernetes cluster. So what is a dev pod? So when we're doing automated CI and CD, we've already got a lockdown set of uh, Docker containers or a set of immutable Docker container images which have all the software tools we need to do CI and CD. So we've got the version of uh, Maven or Node, we've got the version of kubectl or Helm or Kanika or whatever, all the software tools we need to do CI and CD well in the cloud. We've got Docker images versioned and managed for us to do our CI and CD. What a dev pod is, is a developer pod where all of those same software tools are installed. So inside this pod, I've got the exact same version of all the tools I need to release my project. Now I'm using a Node.js application. Um, if I was using a Java application, we'd have the same version of the JVM and the same version of Maven. In this case, we've got the same version of Node and all the default Node packages installed. So inside here, I can just run my Node application. I can run tests. I can debug things, I can compile things, I can try things out. Now, one of the other interesting things about a dev pod is there's two kind of ways of using a dev pod. You can either um, use a web-based IDE and edit the code inside your dev pod, or you can use a sync program like Ksync to synchronize your um, 
the, your source code from your desktop into the pod. So you can use a desktop IDE like IntelliJ or Eclipse or something, and then just run and compile things inside the dev pod. So it's up to you which way uh, you want to try. I'm using the web-based IDEs. I'm going to click on this uh, link there, and I'll get a web-based IDE up. So this is going to load uh, Thea from Eclipse, which is a web-based IDE. And there's the source code for this application. Let me make the browser a little bit bigger so it's easy to read. So this is the source code for the application we've uh, just promoted to the staging environment. We'll see here's the uh, the really amazing homepage, the Hello Node from Jenkins X. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, also open this other web browser. I'm going to type npm start. So I'm going to run Node inside my dev pod. So that's running inside a pod in a a container is running in a pod inside the Kubernetes cluster in my own namespace. Um, I'm then going to open this URL in this browser window here. So this is going to open the uh, dev pod version of my application running. I'll pop it over there. Um, so now we're running our application in a container. It looks like it's running on my desktop, but really it's running inside the container. So now I can, I'll try to go as quick as I can here. I can type awesome and hit reload. Boom, and it's now running. So in other words, we get really fast, interactive rebuild and, and rerunning of the applications inside a pod in Kubernetes on the same cluster. So it means we tr really can, we, if it, let me try again, we really can be awesome um, and spell really wrong. Uh, let's fix that, that's bad. Let's capitalize that, that's better. Phew, that's better. So we can be really awesome and go really, really quickly editing source code, trying it really quickly inside Kubernetes, then when we're ready and everything's good, we can do a git commit, create a pull request, and submit this code change to the rest of the team. So by using dev pods, we can use the cloud well. We can use the same version of all the software tools we need so we don't develop with one version of Node and one version of Maven or whatever. And then all of a sudden, our pipelines are using a different software stack, and then all kinds of problems happen. So dev pods is a way of really accelerating teams so that we're all sharing the same developer tools. We're all sharing the same uh, uh, software. We're using the same platform all the time. When, when we're developing in the pre-commit flow, when we do pull, pull requests and generate preview environments, and then when we merge to master and we do releases and promotions, all the way through, we're using the same software tools. Now, these software tools, we can, they're obviously all stored in Git, in the Git repository, so we can upgrade these software tools whenever we want. But we want to make sure that as a team, we all upgrade together on the same microservice to minimize, you know, Undifferentiated heavy lifting. Let's share the tools across every stage of the software development lifecycle. So that's DevPods. So to summarize, Jenkins X automates your CI and CD. Um, we can automate K-native serverless applications or traditional Kubernetes applications as well. Basically, any application that runs on Kubernetes can have automated CI and CD with Jenkins X. Uh, if you've got any questions or if you've got any feedback, please pop to the Jenkins X community. On the community page, we have a Slack channel where we're all hanging out every day to help you if you have any issues or uh, want to learn more about Jenkins X. If you want to learn more about the serverless Jenkins X pipelines in particular that use Tekton, there's a URL. And to learn more about using Knative with Jenkins X, uh, check out the serverless page. So that's it for me. Thank you for listening. And please check out the Jenkins X community uh, and let's have fun and go serverless. Thank you.